the feeling we seek. I want to speak about um, the word feeling in the context of Neville's teachings because this is a word that is so commonly um, um, misused in my opinion and for me it confused me as well. But um, what we should ask is more of the question. Instead of asking, like, what does he mean by it? What, is he, what does he mean by that? And um, does it mean emotion? Does it mean this? Um, we should really ask the questions, well, what are we after? What feeling are we honestly after? And um, Neville actually tells us uh, quite clear what it is. It's actually the feeling of it being done. The feeling of fulfillment. The feeling of the desire being granted. That is the feeling we're after. Um, you know, Neville once quoted, I do not mean emotion, but the acceptance of the fact that my wish has been fulfilled or that my desire has been granted. The acceptance of that fact. That's, that's the feeling. Um, and then he also tells us what the feeling of the wish fulfilled means. In uh, chapter 4 of Power of Awareness, he tells you right at the end of it, he says, the feeling of the wish fulfilled means you make the future dream a present fact. So that's what that means. You make a future dream a present fact to you. Um, now, to make the future dream a present fact, that means that you experience the reality of your desire as though it's a present fact to you. You just experience it. You don't do anything but um, you can just claim the words. You can just um, visualize a scene where you're just experiencing it because if you were who you wanted to be, all you would do is experience being it. You wouldn't do anything else. There wouldn't be this um, um, great, I guess you wouldn't you wouldn't do anything unnatural. It would be so natural to you to be what you want to be. You just would experience being it. Maybe you'd have somebody tell you that you are it or congratulate you on it or you're simply visualizing yourself being where you're supposed to be. If you were who you wanted to be, you would just experience that version of yourself. You would feel what that version feels. You would hear what that version hears. You would see what that version sees. And that's all you would do because that's all you would do if you were it in the world. So you just experience it. You must be what you experience in imagination. You must be it if you truly experience it. And to experience is the easiest thing in the world. You're experiencing right now what um, what you currently are beholding within yourself. You know, there's this story. Um, <laughs> I'm debating whether or not I should get into this story right now. No, yeah, let's get into it. Um, there's a story about Neville where he talks about this man who was rich and he wanted to experience poverty. So he um, decides to imagine, or he decides to go to Africa and <laughs> to experience poverty. So he goes there to uh, you know, not have any food. He leaves his mansion in the United States, flies over to Africa for like two weeks, lives with these people, these poor people, and basically you know, doesn't have food or water. And then he comes back to his house uh, after two weeks, and he walks into his mansion, and he goes to bed. Uh, and he thinks he experienced poverty. And Neville says that he did not experience poverty at all. Not one bit. If he experienced poverty, he would assume the state of being poor, and he would really experience it. He would experience all those thoughts. He would experience all those struggles that a poor person has. He would really experience it. It wouldn't be some fake where I have, oh, I actually have millions in, in the, at, back at home, but I'm just pretending. We're not pretending. That's pretending. When we imagine, we are not pretending. We are actually immersing ourselves in feeling um, that we are already what we want to be. We just experience it. We don't question. We don't really think, well, I'm really just laying in my bed in my undesirable state, imagining myself you know, being what I want to be, but it's not real. No, you completely let go of your present state. And you, as Neville says, you go mad. And you completely assume you are what you want to be. You assume it. So it's not pretending. It's not like that guy. I always found that story funny because that that man did not experience poverty. <laughs> not one bit. <laughs> um, but 
when you imagine your desire being fulfilled, you so you imagine and you trust that you can almost do this. You can almost say, I want whatever it is you want. And you can hear your imagination speak back to you saying, yes, it is done. Now, if you trust in it, fully trust in that, you will feel no fear. There will, you, you won't feel it. You have to feel that there's nothing to defend yourself from. Um, you don't have to be defensive about anything. There's no one who's going to do anything to you. No one can take it away. You completely let go of all of those fears. There's no anxieties about it. Because you're trusting. Trusting removes all of those anxieties and all those fears. And then when those are removed, in comes, because uh, love is a form of, uh, or trust is a form of love, in comes pleasure. Um, or some sense of pleasure. So, trusting in the acceptance or the um, in that yes, hearing it from imagination, you, you are you're trusting in your imagination from that, which is the only power. So you you can almost feel that I'm trusting the only creative power. It says yes, so it's a yes. I don't question it. Now, when you accept that, that elicits an emotional response or a motor response. The key word there is response. So, from feeling the wish fulfilled, or my desire has been said yes to, or it's been granted to me, that elicits an emotional response or emotive response. But that um, will be subjective to you. For me, there are times where I just feel immense pleasure because it's been granted, or I just I feel intense gratitude. Um, these are not forced. They're responses to the acceptance of it being done. It's my trust or my faith in the fact that it's been done causes me to have emotional responses that are pleasurable to me. So I don't force emotional responses. I let it all be natural, just as if someone gave me a wonderful gift. I wouldn't force myself to be thankful. If it's something I truly wanted and they gave it to me, you, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pretend to be thankful. I really fully trust and believe in that yes, and that causes, and by emotive response, I mean like maybe my body opens up or I just smile or I just gently smile. It's all natural. That's all I need to do. I've accepted it, and, I've, and there's no forcing. It's just a, a very natural response to, um, like I said, something I've been wanting has been given to me. Of course, I'm going to feel pleasure. Um, but it's, I'm not pretending. I actually accept it's been granted to me. I believe in my imagination. And um, while I'm imagining, I do not worry or ask. I don't even entertain when it will happen or how it will happen. I don't entertain those. They're not, you don't have to, um, and to be honest, those are easier to let go of, in my opinion. To, because if you look back, there are so many times where you've imagined stuff and they, it's come into being, you don't even realize how it happened. So you can trust your imagination knows the ways and means, um, just from past experiences. I mean, at least for me, I can just go to past experience and realize there's just no way I could have conjured up that. So uh, those those bridge of incidences. So I don't have to worry about how it will happen, when it will happen. I've always noticed it's been on perfect timing. So I don't even worry about when. I don't care about those two things. While I am imagining, the future and the past are gone from my mind. I just experience as a, as a present fact what my desire is. So I don't. I make the the. Uh, the desire into fulfillment. And what I also do not do is I let go of all what ifs. I don't what if, which is to doubt. I don't I don't say yes, okay, thank you, it's been given to me, but what if, what if something bad really happened? Or what if I get my desire, it's not what I want? Or what if, what if, what if? I don't say those things. I don't ask when, I don't ask how, I don't ask or uh, what if. I just accept it's been said yes to. And that's how you, that's, if you stop doing all of that, you will understand exactly what I'm saying, that it elicits an emotional response. You will feel um, some response from it. You will feel very either delighted or pleasurable or you'll be smiling. That is your response to feeling it fulfilled. That's you not doubting. That's you trusting in imagination. You're no longer what ifing. You're no longer asking how or when. You let those completely go. It's not your concern. All your concern, there is only one goal here. And the only goal is to um, accept that it's done. 
That is the only goal there is. It's to experience it being given to you entirely with no strings attached. You might, there's no strings attached. It gives, it gives you all things. If you accept it, it can give you all things. And I'm telling you, when you let go of what ifing and you just accept everything that comes to you that you want and you don't doubt it within your own mind, you, you will feel so much pleasure. It doesn't matter what it is. You can say, like I said in my last video, no one can embarrass you. Don't what if that. Just accept it. Say yes. And believe in the yes and move on. And do it to something else. And you just keep doing it. To everything. You fully trust in your imagination. And you will have no fear at all. Because trust removes the fear. And it removes all your anxieties. And you can, and this is, um, there's a proverb that says, um, <clears throat> hope deferred makes the heart go sick. But a desire fulfilled is the tree of life. So if you want if you want to have life, it tells you to fulfill your desires. But hope deferred, you see, your desires being deferred or not being fulfilled, um, makes your heart sick. So if you want to heal your heart, you have to fulfill your desires within yourself. And when you and you cannot fulfill desires within you, if you are what ifing them, or if you're asking how or when, you're not fulfilling them. They're not. It's not about the when has already been answered. It's now. The how has already been answered. It's now. You don't ask these questions in imagination. They're already fulfilled. And there's no what ifs because you're the creator of everything within you. So you don't have to, well, what if something, what if this happens? What if that happens? Well, you have to create that for that for it to happen. So don't worry about it. Don't ask how. You don't need to. You don't need to ask when or what ifs. So to, to heal your heart, you want to fulfill your desires. And as I said in my previous videos um, about this is about having an itch and you're scratching it. You have to think of it that way. But you can also think of it uh, if you, when you're hungry, you eat. But when you're desiring, why don't you give yourself fulfillment? And remember, desires are within you. So you fulfill them within you. You change them to fulfillments within. And uh, I want to give a... Um, to, to summarize all of this, I really want, I think Neville really in this lecture called uh, Grace versus Law, I think he really nails it. He says, um, as a quote, Well, my work is to simply trust my imagination completely. Whenever I go to bed at night, the very last thought, just as I'm, as, just as I'm about to retire, I think of those I would like to help and those who have called upon me for help. And all I do is I just think of them. I know my father knows before I ask him what is asked of me. And so I think of them. And I know exactly what they asked me. I accept it completely and it's done. When, it, when it's going to be done, I don't know. How it's going to be done, I still don't know. I only know I think of them. And thinking of them, I know what they asked of me. And that was enough. And, go, and go, I go sound asleep completely oblivious of anything else. If I'm blessed that night with a vision, all the good. A dream, all the good. But the next day I do not wonder. I, want, I, do not, I do not think, I wonder if it worked. I have complete confidence in my father that it worked. Whether they tell me or not, I don't really care. I'm not seeking credit. I'm not seeking praise from them. I really don't care. Well, when they do tell me, I can share it with you, and it encourages everyone who comes here to trust God. And may I tell you again, God is your own wonderful human imagination. He's not on the outside. He's actually sunk in you as your wonderful human imagination. Man is all imagination, and God is man, and exists in us and we in him. The eternal body is the imagination, and that is God himself, Blake. Trust it, believe it, and see how things work in, your, in this world. And um, I find that to be um, so important when you realize that he says, I don't ask how, I don't ask when. Um, I'm, I'm oblivious to it all. I just, I just think of them. I just accept it. That's all I do. And I move on with my day. And um, that is you accepting that. That is your faith that it's done. It's, remember, it's, faith is the conviction of things unseen. So you imagine yourself being something or you say you're being something. You can also say the conviction of things not heard by mortal ears. So you're, you're hearing things inside your mind and you're believing in them. You're not, you don't think they're false forcing it upon you. That's delusion. You believe that they're true, fully believing that they're true. 
and then you walk by faith and not by your sight. And that is the feeling we seek. 